But this is eh, the USS Centaur. So it is a hybrid between the Excelsior class and the Miranda class, specifically the Reliant variants of Miranda class. Um, this model, it's very, very tiddly, very small, but um, there's, it's just because there's not a great deal on the actual ship, and also because the nacelles are as big as they are, um, they take up a lot of the overall space. Uh, but they're, they're quite weedy things, it's just, it's just quite small, to be honest. Um, the Excelsior suffer from this when you do this kind of same length to width scale kind of a thing, because they were so ludicrously long, uh, you get less bang for your buck, as it were. So um, we have a, a white hull with some of the aztec there, the USS Centaur. It kind of looks marbled in a weird way. I don't know if that's just me. But, um, also, this um, obviously looks kind of like a, a phaser array. It isn't, because it's uh, obviously sort of the TOS movie style, it has uh, phaser banks here instead. A uh, shuttle bay at the front there, you've got a sensor palette and all the usual detailing as well. I have to say about this one actually, I do really like the uh, colour palette for it. You've got the two torpedo launchers that are at the front, and the two torpedo launchers that are at the back, making a total of four torpedo launchers. That's four Eagle Moss, that's what you get when you add two twos together. You've got the rear impulse engines there, massive great big things. I very much doubt that this would be capable of source of separation, because let's face it, what is the point? Uh, and then you have the warp nacelles, which I think were actually custom built for this. If, the, if not, then they were some kind of variant on the um, original Excelsiors. Uh, now then, obviously the engines and the source section are from the Excelsior, and then this pod is from the sort of roll bar on the Reliant. They literally just glued the two together and had this kind of quite cool sort of a space cruiser destroyer kind of thing. And as you saw in um, the episode of DS9 that this was in, I forget the actual name of it, I should have done my research, but um, it was actually quite a nippy and surprisingly devastating vessel, given that it's a load of old parts glued together. Um, as a model goes, I do quite like this one. Again, it's quite the talking point, because obviously it's one of these vessels that was seldom seen, although it's, it's again, one of those fan favourites. I think the fans just like things that you see once and never see again, sort of like the um, optolithic data rod, which I think was from a few episodes later, or before, I forget. DS9's a bit hazy in my head now, I've not watched it in a long time. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's perfectly fine. If you are low on space, it's quite good, because it doesn't take up a great deal of room, because it is as small as it is. Um, it's quite sturdy as well. I've not managed to break this one, which, um, again, for anyone who's been watching my reviews, is saying something. Uh, one thing to note is that the uh, nacelles do not have transparent blue plastic. They are painted, which is becoming a more common thing, I have noticed. Uh, but overall, it is a, a lovely little talking piece and a fantastic addition to any collections. Uh, the magazine is, you know incorrect still, but hey-ho, you can't have everything. But what do you think of this model if you own it? If not, would you like to see it? Do you regret that we didn't see more of this, seeing as they did have it kicking around anyway? It's always peculiar when they make a model and then they just never use it. I find that quite strange myself. Uh, but anyway, do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think there is something unusual about it? Do you like the idea of kit bashing? Do you think they got better as Star Trek went along? So many questions and so little time. Plenty to fuel a few comments down there. If you like the video, please do thumb it up. If you're enjoying Star Trek Discovery at the minute, don't thumb the video down. That's that's none of the plot twists or anything have anything to do with me, so don't take it out. On me, uh, but if you're enjoying it, thumb my video anyway, because yeah, I'll take the I'll take the good about it, um, and subscribe to the channel because I do this and other geeky stuff on a regular basis. If you're a fan of Red Dwarf, by the way, definitely hit that button for subscribe, and that is all I will say on the topic. But for now, though, space.